This man took protein and carbs to the highest extent ever. I don't even, I'm trying to figure out what type of brown, like, this looks like a brownie or like a, like a cakey substance, but I really can't tell. I'm literally in the cafe about to eat Ingles right now because that's, <laughs> that's just how, that tells you enough about how I've been feeling about my calf lately. But, you know what I'm saying? Trying to bounce back after yesterday, y'all. Trying to bounce back. All right, if you beat Mary Bow with one loss in the conference, so then if, what happened? Oh, so if we beat, if, if that happens, if we went out and we beat Maryville, we win the conference. And if LaGrange, if LaGrange loses again, which they probably will, they're not going to, I don't think they're going to beat Huntington. Mm -mm. I mean, honestly, y'all should have beat them by at least two Bro, you know, we had, bro, we had, we had, same amount of turnovers as penalties. We only had five. Oh my gosh, that's facts. We only had five penalties yesterday. Wow. I know, you really didn't have that. Garden, we, had but the ones that hurt we didn't get to go last time. The ones that hurt the most so I'm hoping that the today in the, in I can actually get my chicken off right now. Yeah, turnovers. That's all turnovers I want. Yeah. Yeah. Forget about yesterday. Forget about yesterday. yesterday. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I feel like by the time beat up serves us, all of Garden's way will be done. That's how long it's going to beat up stay. Oh, we got. Yeah, that's fine. You weren't even. Were you there? What? Well, yeah. Remember? We remember sit, we all, with us, yeah. What the world? It was really us at the table. I know, this I man know. forgot that we went to Virginia, that we went to B Dubs together. What? The, I, that kind of hurt my feelings. You know what? That's why I sat next to Ian, because he was nicer to me. Anyways, here at Olive Garden, giving the second chance. Hopefully, um, not even about the wait. Last time wasn't even the wait that took forever. It was the darn uh, electricity thing that was. It looks okay today. It looks a little different than the other ones, but. Hopefully, we'll go in there and be able to get a spot because I'm trying to eat. And we have a smaller group. I see a group of like 30 over there. So maybe a group of four can sit first. That's my prayer. Oh, group of three, actually. Oh, uh, no, Corbin. All right, yeah, we got a 40 minute wait. Well, 40 to 50, they said. I'm playing that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's less, less one. So I really do not. I just want to eat. I'm a little hungry. I've had one meal today. Look at Joey sitting on there. He wants to be, he wants to be all cool. He wants to pull over there by himself. Legs spreading on up. Me and Ian, we're, we're real grown men. You know what I'm saying? We're going to act cool. We just got to be cool. You know what I'm saying? But either way, we we ate over there last time with Chili's. That's the first time I think I've been to Chili's since I was like, darn. It was probably eight, nine years ago. First time I've been to Chili's in eight, nine years. Um, and, and it was cool. It was chill. You know what I'm saying? It was $16 I spent weren't worth it though. I could have paid 13 at Corky's for a burger and fries and been more satisfied. But I'm not going to complain. You know what I'm saying? Be happy you get food. A lot of people can't eat. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm waiting 40, 50 minutes for this because, you know, I want to eat. Oh, shoot. Ian, did you even recognize I was up there? So you can see when uh, someone's gonna like come see and hit up a door or something, I guess. I don't know. I think that's what it's for, right? Hey, Joey. That's up there so you don't run in, like, you know when somebody's coming out, right? Or coming in? Huh. Shoot, I wouldn't know. I didn't, I didn't even notice that was there. See, it's pointless for me. All uh, right, y'all, I have my chicken Alfredo. I'm rating it a... Out of, my, out of all the chicken Alfredo's I've gotten from here, that's probably a six out of 10. I gotta be honest with you. But I enjoyed it. It's still, it's still better than buy everything else I eat. You know what I'm saying? This first time I had pasta in a real long time. Uh, I got my black tie. Alex did not tip our waitress. You did. <gasps> oh, now we're lying? All right, all right, I'm gonna tell the truth. Hey, y'all, so um, I found something out and I, I, went, I didn't tell Joey who told me, but in reality, it was Ian. And I sat here and tried to let him slide. But you know what, Ian, since you want to snitch on me, I'm snitching on you. So now you know, Joey, he told me. Wow. Told you what? Nothing. No. I didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. See, look, that's the L friends, bro. And last time we were at Olive Garden, they tried to say, I said, oh, oh my, G-O-D, but they lied. We have spent a lot of time the last couple months um, during these vlogs speaking about sin and the damage it creates. We spent a lot of time talking about repentance. And we spent a whole bunch of time talking about the shaking. Um, and that could be referenced to tribulation, trials, um, situations where you have to go through things in order to get your focus back on the Lord. We have talked about these things multiple times through the last month, and they all accumulate to one very important point, and it is keeping God number one. As Christians, it's easy to put God as first in our bio. It's easy to put follow the Lord in our bio, all these different things that reference Lord being number one. But in our hearts, it is a much different challenge to truly fulfill that. In our lives, it is a much dip, more difficult thing to truly live that out. Because while your mouth can say a lot, your mouth can't do a lot. You hear me? It's easy to give lip service, but with your actions, it's hard to provide a real service. And see, while reading today, I just finished Haggai 
The first and second chapter, which is the totality of the book of Haggai, another minor prophet, minor in terms of how much he um how much it was written by Haggai, not minor in the type of work that he did. Understand, all prophets, all people of the Lord have amazing work to be done. And so when you hear minor or major prophet, it's not about the work that they did in the in, in for the Lord. It's about how much they wrote, how much we know about them. And we don't know much about the minor prophets just because they didn't write much material in terms that we could really discover or read about them. Uh, but either way, <laughs> off that little lesson, talking about Haggai, the first and second chapter, um, while reading Haggai, the work of the Lord, the will of the Lord, the work of the kingdom is being displayed quite heavily. I can recall um, through my, my freshman year in college last year, um, time still now to this day, and even my senior year of high school, a lot of my prayers were oriented in um, the work of the kingdom. It was about having a kingdom mindset. My To this day, a pastor who's really affected my life in terms of learning and edifying me is Tony Evans. And I will never forget how he always, he would preach about having a kingdom mindset. And that is one thing that I have really learned is is truthfully a necessity in Christians today in a believer today, we need to have a, a kingdom mindset because quite often living here on the earth, we can get lost in living in and on the earth, which means that we get caught up in what we see. We get caught up in what we feel. We get caught up on what we're, we're doing, but not what we're called to do. See, we get caught up in what the eyes and the five senses can deal with. These, these qualitative things have become consuming and we lose sight of what we're called to really see. See, we lose sight of the kingdom because while we cannot see the kingdom, there is still a work to be done for the kingdom. And while reading Haggai, the first and second chapter, we um it, it jumps from in Zephaniah where we're seeing the Lord uh, speaking about um, Israel and them being taken away. So if, if y'all know, if y'all remember anything from where we are right now in our reading, we've been reading the past couple books about Israel um, being taken away or being prepared to be taken away. Here in Haggai, they've already been taken away. Um, and not only have they been, this is basically around the time of, um, it's probably a couple years after Nehemiah and them. Because you remember Nehemiah was a cupbearer for the king. Um, I think this would be the king of Persia at the time. So he's a cupbearer. And this, they, they end up, he ends up helping um, doing the work of the Lord and getting um, Israel restored into their land after being captured. Here in Haggai, the land has already been restored for 16 years. And so in the last 16 years, the Israelites have spent time building their own homes, building their own houses. If anything, anybody knows anything about Solomon, King Solomon um, uh, ended up doing the work the work that his father had prayed for because David spent so many years saying he wanted to build a temple for the Lord. The Lord fulfilled this prayer through his son Solomon and Solomon built a beautiful temple for the Lord. Of course, when Israel ends up being taken away, they um the, the temple is destroyed and after the uh, Israel is restored, it is time for restoring of the temple. It is time that the Israelites come and make a home for the Lord. And see, the problem is the Israelites did something we do daily. They began focusing on their house before the house of the Lord. How often do we live going through our days focusing on our own work than the work of the Lord? Focusing on our own things than the work of God. See, our mindset has to be kingdom oriented first. Yes, we live here on earth. We have needs and necessities on this earth. You must eat. You must drink. There are some things that need to be done. But again, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. The Bible does not say, does not say store all these riches that you need in your bank account and then come and come and do the Lord's work and ask him for your help. It does not say depend on yourself. And watch the Lord come through. No, no, it's a seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. So in all we do, we must be seeking the Lord and his righteousness. Righteous. I'm still, um, honestly, I want to do a deep dive into what that word means. Because while I understand it, I hear it and I feel like I can understand it. I feel like we need to further our understanding of what that word really means. And see, when I'm thinking about it, I think about the, the word righteous as right way, living right, living perfect, living justified. When I hear the word righteous. 
And so when it says seek him in all his righteousness, we need to be seeking his right way, his right will. We must be seeking what the Lord requires and what the Lord calls good and calls right. Not what we feel is right, not what we think is right, but what the Lord says is right. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. We must be seeking the will of God here on earth. The, our father prayer is a prayer that I learned at a real young age. And I think many of us have. And before football games, um, I'll come up with our team and I'll, I will all recite it together. Um, going through high school, we all recited together before games. Until my senior year, I don't think I ever recited it with an understanding. And in the beginning of the Our Father prayer are some very important things we need to pay attention to. So let's, let's walk through real quick. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Those verses right there relate directly to what we're talking about. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. We want heaven on earth. Thy will be done. The Lord's righteousness. We want to see righteous works being done here on earth. What are we seeking first? If you hear the Our Father prayer, I never once said, I never once heard anything about my riches, my home, my glory. No, it's all about the Lord's will being done. It's all about God making his way. In the Our Father prayer, there's this, there's, you, you hear asking about the Lord to provide daily bread, so on for his people. Yes. Why? Because it's in the Lord's will that his people be, be worked out for. And Jeremiah 29, 11 makes it clear that God has a future and a hope for us. He, he looks to bring us success. He looks to provide for us. He wants us to prosper. Jeremiah 29, 11 is a beautiful explanation of the Lord's will towards his people. So yes, in God's will, there is prospering and success for his people. And so if we are looking to fulfill God's work and do God's will, we will see beautiful blessings in our life. So we don't have to stress about about trying to provide for ourselves, we don't have to be like the Israelites here and, and and worry about building our home first. See, when looking to do the will of the kingdom, when looking to build God's temple, when looking to build the home of God, the kingdom of the Lord up, when looking to to do the Lord's will and God's work, we will be blessed while doing the Lord's work. Why? Because it's in His will. So we don't have to worry. We don't have to worry. We don't have to stress. We don't have to try and rush things and do things on our own. The Lord, it's already in his will. And so my point coming to you today is saying before we focus on building our own homes here on this earth, let's prioritize building the kingdom of God in all that we do. Because it can get easy to try and 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 and, and, and work your butt off, nest your way, your butt off, do what you have to do for yourself. We have to understand that above and beyond all else, the Lord's will must take priority of our, over our own. And I'm going to leave it here. I'm really going to do it this time. I say this all the time. Lately, humbleness has been heavily on my heart and on my mind. And when I think of what it means to be humble, it's come down to more than just denying self, but losing self. Denying self and losing self, humbling ourselves takes us to forget ourselves. That is what it takes to humble ourselves. Because when you're so focused on yourself, it's hard to be humble. It's hard to be humble when you're always locked in and focused on self. To be humble, we must forget ourselves for a moment and focus on the greater good. And the good that we're called to focus on is the work and will of the kingdom of God. Humble yourself and become a servant today. Be a servant to God's kingdom. First, build up his home. And I promise you, you will have a home in eternity. See, God has already promised us a home in eternity. So let us take our time here today to focus on building a home for, for others on, the, on this earth and do, furthering God's will. Let us focus on doing the work and the will of the kingdom before we ever focus on doing our own things and fulfilling our own desires. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. I promise you, if we are focused on the kingdom, if we are doing the work of the kingdom, we will be blessed just by being a blessing. I promise you that. Why? Because the Lord has promised it. And in the, what the Lord promises shall come to fruition. But we must walk in faith. We must walk in faith knowing that it shall come to fruition. And so we've been going through the Old Testament. And we're seeing people going through the shaking. 
We're seeing people going through times where, where God is trying to refocus them and show them that he's number one. Why? Because what God is showing is that we can have the nicest home here on earth. We can spend all our life trying to focus on gaining all these things for self, do, trying, to, trying to build our own home here. But God is telling us, what is the point of securing a home on earth, but not having a home on eternity? What does it mean to build the largest building on earth, but not build the largest building in eternity? See, it's so many of us are focused on building building community here on earth, but aren't building a community in heaven. We're leading all these people to, to in ways to gain money. Maybe we're teaching people how to become successful, but are we teaching people how to find the Lord Jesus Christ and further their lives in eternity? See, the work of the kingdom is a special work because it's an eternal work. Focus yourself on that which is eternal before you ever prioritize what is temporary. God doesn't say you can't own anything, but he says before you ever own that Bugatti, before you ever own that mansion, before you ever own that relationship, before you ever own these things, prioritize first that thing that you can own forever, you can gain forever, and that is the kingdom of God. Let us pray. God, I say thank you, Lord God, because you have blessed us. You will bless us with the most amazing gift, Lord God, the most wonderful gift, the eternal gift, and that is your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God, that you love us so, that you care for us so, Lord God, that you teach us, Lord God, the truth. You show us the truth, Lord God, and you revealed it, Lord God, to us, and you didn't give it. It was not for any cost, Lord God, of our own. We don't have to pay anything, for you've already paid the price, the ultimate price, the most amazing price, and you did it all out of love. For God so loved the world that he gave. You gave. And so, Father, as you gave to us, we look to give back. We look to walk in servitude to you. We look, Lord God, to give to your kingdom, to walk in the ways, Lord God, you have called us to and be a blessing unto your kingdom. You've blessed us that we may be a blessing. And so, Father, with all you've done, Lord God, let us look, Lord God, to you. Let us focus on you, Lord God. Let us take this lesson and learn and walk forward, realizing, Lord God, before we look to build our own home, before we look to gain our own things, before we look, Lord God, to bless ourselves, let us first be a blessing to your kingdom. Let us first bless and glorify your name. Let us first, Lord God, look to give glory unto you before we ever take glory for ourselves, Father. And all that we do, let us do it unto you and not unto self, Father. Humble ourselves before your feet, worshiping your name, walking in your way, Lord God, and losing ourselves and focusing, Lord God, on the kingdom. Because, Lord God, we prioritize first the kingdom of God. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God. We worship your name on high. It's in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Yo, hey, y'all you know, enjoy this vlog, man. I pray that you leave a like, comment, subscribe. I pray you enjoy the vibe, man. Hey, a living. Young and winning, we'll say that.